Blessings, everybody. Welcome back to the Humble Servants Homestead. Guys, today you guys are in for a surprise and a treat. Now, of course, you guys know that we are in the peak of our milking season for our dairy goats. And right now we're getting a little bit over a gallon a day of milk, which for a family our size is plenty of milk for us to consume as our raw milk daily intake. But it also is enough milk for us to do other things that we enjoy, such as making ice cream, yogurt. Did I give it away? <laughs> of course, as you guys can see, I have my crock pot out here and I have a gallon of milk here. Today we're going to be making some homemade yogurt. Now, yogurt is one of those things that we consume and we absolutely love here on our homestead because it helps to contribute to our intake of probiotics. It helps to contribute to good gut flora and good gut health, which we deem as very important to us. Okay, so we enjoy taking intaking yogurt, but there's nothing better than homemade yogurt and so today we're going to show you guys a quick well i wouldn't say quick but a simple process of making yogurt at home for yourself and i tell you once you try it this way you will not buy store-bought yogurt again so come on guys let's get started okay now before we move along and get started i want to talk to you guys and give you a couple of um tips first and foremost there are three major kinds of yogurt that are on the market right now. You have your typical yogurt, which is a loose yogurt um, that you would buy from the store. A lot of times it's in those cups where you have the fruit at the bottom or the different mix-ins that you'll mix in that loose type of yogurt. That's regular yogurt. You have your Greek style yogurt, which is a, a thicker yogurt. You know what I mean? It's not as runny as your regular yogurt. And then you have something that is... Um, an Icelandic type of yogurt, which is skier. And that's along the lines of what we will be making today. Um, I was making Greek yogurt uh, previously, but then upon doing a little bit more research, I fell in love with skier because um, it is typically made from heirloom cultures. So the bacteria and the probiotics, the live cultures that are inside of skier, have been the same cultures that have been used for a large number of years. Some people say 500 to 1,000 years. I'm not sure how long, but I do know that they are heirloom cultures. And of course, heirloom is my best friend when it comes to things that haven't been tampered with or uh, messed with and have been proven to work for a large number of years. I'm all for it. So today we're going to be using skier cultures to make our yogurt, okay? So now, with that being said, let's get started. So the first step in our process is to pour our milk over into our crock pot, which is what I'm going to do right now. Okay, and so we're going to, like I said, we're making about a gallon of milk to start. But by the time it cooks down, of course, you will not end up with a gallon of milk. And what I also want to say is this too. Although we are using, and so you see the fat in this milk, and that's what I was just going to get to. So although we are using skier cultures, I'll tell you where the skier kind of differs from typical Greek yogurt. Skier is made from skimmed milk. Now that we have our milk inside of our crock pot, let's turn it on to our low setting. And we're going to set our timer over here and we want this to uh, sit here on low and bring the temperature up to about 180 to 185 degrees. That for me in this uh, crock pot typically takes about three hours, right at about three hours, give or take about five minutes or so. So we're going to set our timer for three hours and um, we'll come back for the next step. Okay. Now that we have our milk mixture going in our crock pot for the next three hours, let's talk about a few things, okay? First and foremost, one of the key details that I did leave out in the beginning is that when you are making yogurt, you often have to start with a starter yogurt or a starter set of cultures in order to transform your milk into yogurt. There has to be a set of cultures that are introduced in the first batch of 
milk that you're making in order for it to then become a yogurt, okay? Typically, that is done with store-bought yogurt. Now, when looking for a um, yogurt to use as your starter yogurt from store-bought yogurt, the main important thing is the list of ingredients on the back. You're looking for a yogurt that only contains milk and live cultures. No extra ingredients, okay? Just the milk and the live cultures. That is what you're looking for in a container of yogurt from the store that you're going to use as your starter yogurt or your cultures, your starter cultures, okay, for your first batch of yogurt. Now keep in mind, once you successfully make the first batch at home, all you have to do from that point on is save some of that yogurt back. And that's what you'll use as your culture starters for your next batch of yogurt as you go along. Okay, so the culture starter that I use for my first batch of yogurt is this Icelandic provisions skier. And the reason I chose to use that, again, because if you could see the back, let me see. If you could see the back, I'll try and get it to focus. There you go. You have your heirloom skier cultures here. Okay, so this is the reason why I chose this brand. Okay, and again, once you make your initial batch at home, there's no need to buy yogurt again. You just save back a little from um, each batch of yogurt that you make and you use that as your starter cultures for the, the next batch of yogurt and the next batch and the next batch. Typically, um, my rule of thumb is I use one fourth of a cup of starter cultures for every quart of milk that I do. So if I'm making a half gallon batch of yogurt, I would use a half of a cup of culture starters or old yogurt from my previous batches. Today, since we are using a gallon of milk, I'm going to use a full cup of my culture starters. And so today, since I'm showing you guys how to do that with the Icelandic heirloom cultures, then I'm going to use a cup of this. Okay, so we'll be back in three hours. See you soon. And another thing, guys, that I forgot to tell you. Now, you noticed that we poured full fat milk into our crock pot. So I'm going to tell you the difference in uh, the traditional way that skier is made versus what I'm doing here today. Now, you notice we poured full fat milk into our crock pot. Typically, that is what you would use if you were making a Greek yogurt. Greek yogurts are made with full fat milk. Skier, on the other hand, is made from skim milk or fat-free milk, milk that the cream has been skimmed off the top of. So kind of keep that in mind. We're making a skier, but we're using a full fat milk to do so. Now, if you want to use a skim milk or a fat-free milk to kind of cut some calories and things of that nature, then by all means, you are welcome to do that. But today on the homestead, we're making our yogurt with a full fat milk, okay? Now, I'll see you guys in about two hours and 50 minutes. Okay, you guys, and so you just heard our timer. We are right at our three hour mark, and so now it's time for us to move on to the next step, which is Pretty much basically simple. We brought, whew, we brought this temperature up to uh, about 180, 185. And so now um, what's left for us to do is now take the temperature back down. We need this to cool off and go down to about 110 degrees, which is the perfect and ideal temperature for our cultures to kind of multiply, you know, and get happy. So we're going to just turn off our crock pot, unplug it, and let it sit here for another <laughs> three hours to cool the temperature back down okay so i'll see you guys in about three hours time and we'll move along to the next step okay guys and so now we are back our timer is actually going off again and it took me longer than three hours to get my yogurt to the temp that i wanted so i actually added an extra hour so it's been almost four hours um since we turned this off and as you can hear the timer is going off it's been four hours, so it took our milk mixture four hours to get down to temp. Now, I don't have a thermometer, but I'm going to show you quickly one of the ways that I check to just make sure that my yogurt is the temp that I need before I can move on to the next step. Make sure you start with clean hands, and you simply 
um, take your finger and if you could place it down into your yogurt mixture without it being too hot that it burns you, then you're good to go. Um, that right there is the perfect temperature for us to move on to our next step. Now keep in mind, we are going to be using the Icelandic skier um, heirloom cultures today. Typically, if I wasn't doing a demonstration, I would just use my yogurt from the previous batch that I made. And as you can see, this yogurt was made on the 4th, which was last week Wednesday, and today is Wednesday again. And so once it gets down to about a cup in the container, which is what I have here now, I would just typically use that to make a new batch of yogurt. So um, let's measure out our cup of yogurt and move on to the next step, shall we? So we're just going to get our yogurt opened on up. And we're going to get some of this into our bowl. And that should be plenty. We're now going to get some of our milk mixture. And as you can see, it has a little scalp, scab over the top. A lot of people remove it. I simply just stir it back in. It's not going to do anything. And then we're just going to get some of this mixture, put it in here to bring this culture to temp. And we're just going to get that thoroughly mixed in and well incorporated. The goal is to make sure that these cultures that are being introduced into our crock pot are thoroughly spread all around and so I'll work to get this just removing all of the lumps we could actually put a little bit more of our milk mixture give it a swirl to just make sure that we get those cultures spread throughout the whole entire mixture and then we are ready to move on to the next step which I'll show you right now so now that we've introduced our cultures into our milk mixture and we've created the perfect environment for it to be happy and merry and multiply itself, thus turning this milk mixture into a yogurt, we have to allow it time to rest. So we're going to now remove the crock from the crock pot itself. So I'll put this away. And we're going to put our crock to bed. And by that I mean just take, uh, you could take a, a uh, set of old towels. Me, I have this nice blanket which has been dedicated and designated for specifically my yogurt making. So I'm just going to wrap the crock in this blanket. has been tucked in for a bed I'm going to move this over to my island where it will rest for the next uh, 12 to 14 hours or so and then we'll move along to the next step once we get there okay so I'll see you guys back in about 14 hours 
and we are back and our yogurt has actually been sitting on my island for about 17 hours okay um so now let's i guess take a look and see what it looks like inside and also review the other supplies that we're going to need for this next step so right here i have a bowl and that's going to be used to catch our whey and a couple of strainers and these strainers are going to be used as well to separate our yogurt and catch it and a couple of utensils okay. so come on guys let's get started and i'll show you how we're going to set up this next step of the process okay okay so first and foremost let's get our yogurt or better yet our crock pot unwrapped from its warm and cozy blanket let's see and remove that and let's see what we have guys can you guys see that texture and you can kind of see the way separating but the yogurt is pretty much more solid than it was yesterday okay so we're going to set up our little contraption the goal for this next part of the process is actually you guys you see that way that's running now our goal is to separate that from our yogurt but as you can see right now it's a thick consistency and we want to make it even thicker okay by straining off a lot of the whey so what we're going to do is take our bowl here and this is going to be used to capture our whey we're going to take our smaller strainer here invert it into the bowl and actually hold on one second it looks like I have the wrong silver bowl hold on one second guys okay here we go looks like I picked up the wrong silver bowl they all look the same until you have a specific purpose for them there we go so we have that inverted and we're actually going to sit this next one on top and see how it fits perfectly and you can do this with anything that you have handy okay and then next we're going to take our flour sack cloth and we're going to place it over the top of this strainer here and this is what's going to be used to support our yogurt mixture as we scoop it in okay and we're going to scoop it right on into here now i don't know if you guys could see i'll put it here so you guys can see our yogurt mixture but it's a thick and chunky consistency which is exactly what we were aiming for okay and so now this next goal of ours in this next stage is just to drain off the whey that's in this mixture here separating the yogurt and making it even thicker now if you like a tangier loose type of yogurt then by all means you can skip this step and go straight to bottling your yogurt into a refrigerator um, safe container okay and you can consume it that way but I like my yogurt on the thick side and for me I think that straining it helps remove some of the tang as well so we're going to get this all nice and scooped in here and I'll be right back that is the last of our yogurt mixture here now what we're simply going to do is tie this up we're going to take opposite corners of our flour sack cloth opposite corners and make a loose fitting knot okay and we're going to hold that here and we're going to also grab the opposite corner of the opposite sides and make another loose fitting knot okay make sure you pull them tightly and so now what you have is this okay 
And as you can see, our whey is already draining. Okay? So now we have to let gravity do its thing as well. Okay? So we're going to hang it. Again, we're going to hang it up here on our cabinet so that gravity can do its thing and pull all the way out, leaving a thick consistency of yogurt that we like. Remember that wooden spoon that we had? That's what we're going to use to hang it. So watch me and this is what I'm going to do. So you have your two pieces. We're going to take and twist this one, making a loop. You see the loop here? And I'm going to simply put my fingers through here, slide this where we're going, and that's where our spoon is going to go. But in order to secure it, I have to put our spoon through the cabinet first. So we're going to go through here. We're going to hold our yogurt up through here and then slide the spoon some more. Okay, and there we go. And as you can see, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but our whey is already dripping and draining into our bowl. Okay, into our little contraption down there. And so we're going to allow this to drain now for about an hour or two. Um, I have a couple tasks outside. I have to actually go and milk goats. It's about that time in the evening right now for me to milk goats. And so I'm just going to let this sit here and hang and dangle for a couple hours, maybe an hour and a half to two hours. And then we'll come back and check the consistency and see what we're working with. It may have to go a little bit longer or it may not. But we'll be right back in a couple of hours, guys, okay? We're almost finished. We're on the home stretch, okay? So keep that in mind. See you guys in a little bit. And we are back. <laughs> now the moment we've all been waiting for, the yogurt, right? So um, I just want to let you guys know that I came back in about two and a half hours after this had been hanging and it still contained a lot of weight. So I left it hanging again. Got really busy last night and then I just ended up leaving it here until the next morning. So here we are, <laughs> but we're getting ready to strain our yogurt. And as you guys can see, definitely like my finger is leaving indention. So definitely a different texture um, now than what it was when we first started. And if you guys can see the amount of weight in this bowl that has strained out, I'll let you see that. But if you guys can see the amount of whey that is actually in this bowl right now. So all of that was a liquid that came from our yogurt. And so now we're going to get to straining. Okay. Okay, guys. So first and foremost, we're going to move our whey bowl out of the way. <laughs> no pun intended. And then this little bowl here that we had on the top to balance, we're just going to put it inside of this bowl to give us some stability, okay? And we're going to take our yogurt mixture down. Just like that. Okay. We're going to untie it. and open it up and as you guys can see we have a thick yogurt here and so now our goal is to get it into our jars where we will store it and so I have this spoon here and we're just going to scrape it out of our flour sack cloth and as you can see I don't know if you guys can see that but as you guys can see, it's moving really easily from our flour sack cloth. And so our goal is to just get it into, and so we're just going to get this over into our jar. And again, if you don't like your yogurt, as you guys can see that, if you don't like your yogurt as thick, you can cut down the time frame in which you strain your, your whey. But for me, I like my yogurt really thick, like Greek style yogurt. So um, that is what I aim for when I make yogurt. Okay. 
Okay, and that is one jar. We'll get that tapped in to the side. And we have our next jar. Now, again, remember when I told you we started with one gallon of milk, but of course we weren't going to end up with one gallon. That gallon of milk typically gives me two quarts of yogurt when all is said and done. That's what I aim for, two quarts of yogurt. And we're just about done getting this out of this flour set cloth and into our jar. And that's it right there. Gonna get the last of this goodness actually off the spoon and into the jar. And that, you guys, is it. We have yogurt. So that is it right there. We have all of our yogurt strained and scooped out of our flour sack cloth. And we are left with two gorgeous jars of homemade yogurt. Now, what I would typically do, I typically make yogurt once a week at least, sometimes twice a week, depending on how soon and quickly my family consumes these, okay? So what I would typically do is once we open the last jar of yogurt, and we get down to about right here. That is what I use as my culture starter for my next batch. So I kind of monitor these and each jar will give us about uh, two servings for my size family. Um, and it's five of us that eats the yogurt. So um, each jar gives us so 10 servings out of each jar for my family. And then the next jar, once it's opened up, I use about a cup of that to start the next batch of yogurt but that was it guys simple and easy um, anybody could do this and if you decide to give this recipe a try please let us know in the description box come back and let us know how that goes for you I hope you enjoyed the video I hope it inspires you to start making something simple at home like yogurt guys okay thank you for stopping by the humble servants homestead peace and blessings to each and every one of you guys Remember, keep a smile on your face, you be happy, you be cheerful, and you be blessed. Until the next video, take care.